panel and the Q and A panel. And, and please, please see the uh, the three dots uh, uh, where and, and if, if you if you uh, click on the three dots, you will uh, uh, have you will find the Q and A pa panel. Uh, there, there are the questions uh, uh, in the last session about where where the Q and A panel is, and it's on the three dots there. And and uh, there may be time for oral questions, but in, in uh, the, uh, for 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 morning session, we didn't have time, time to oral questions. So please use the uh, Q and A box. And if you cannot find, you can you can use the chat box uh, to 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 put your uh, question. And and please kindly note that this session is recorded and broadcasted, and. Uh, the recording and presentations will be available through the Miramanta Convention website. And actually, the presentation for the morning session is already available on, 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 the, on the website. So, uh, with this, I would like to ask my colleague Moses to start the recording. And, and then uh, I will uh, start. Uh, again, with uh, uh, another introduction about the Minamata Online. Minamata Online is a series of online sessions convened by the Minamata Convention Secretariat, and it, it consists of, of three streams, COP5, Preparation, Implementation, Review and Support, and Mercury Science. Mercury Science stream is co-organized with the International Conference on Mercury as a Global Pollutant, ICMGP, and, and uh, this is the first session of this of season three, he, which started uh, the, the, this this month. And this this first session is about the mercury waste management. Uh, other uh, the information on the Miramata online is on our website. So uh, with, with this, I think I will switch to the uh, our slide of. So I, I, th I think I will move to the first slide. So um, welcome to the uh, Minamata Online uh, season three, the, the first session of Minamata Online season three, uh, which is about the technical guidelines on mercury waste management. And uh, firstly, uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I, I'm now providing the opening remark. And, and also, I will speak a little bit about the Minamata Convention. And then I will uh, invite an uh, expert uh, to present the Basel Convention technical guidelines, starting with the, uh, the uh, my colleague in the Basel uh, uh, Rotterdam Se Stockholm Convention Secretariat. And we will have a recorded presentation by an expert who really had the pen to uh, update the technical guidelines. And then we will invite uh, the Global Mercury Partnership Waste Management Area to uh, present on their resources, and there will be Q&A. Uh, for for Q&A, we will uh, uh, pick up the questions in the Q&A box, so please uh, uh, don't hesitate to, to put your questions even while you're listening to the presentation. So with this, I would like to uh, jump to the uh, a bit of explanation or, or, or purpose, a reminder about uh, the uh, Minamata Convention and Mercury Waste. Uh, my first slide is to explain that the Minamata Convention covers the whole life cycle of mercury, uh, starting with supply, trade, use, emissions, releases, and waste. And Article 11 covers the waste uh, stage of the mercury cycle. Uh, Article 11 uh, of the Minamata Convention uh, defines mercury waste. So uh, what is what are the mercury wastes that are controlled under Minamata Convention? The convention says that there are three types. Uh, uh, we call it type A is waste consisting of mercury and mercury compounds, and type B, waste containing mercury, type C, waste contaminated with, with mercury, and it says that the conference, conference of the parties, which is the decision-making body of the Minamata Convention, will establish thresholds to uh, define these 
uh, mercury based. And th there's a, a provision on the second type of threshold, which, which is about the mining waste. So overburden waste rock and tailings are excluded from, from the, this definitions unless it exceeds the second threshold defined by the conference of the parties. Then what is what are the obligations under the under the uh, article 11? Uh, parties have three obligations. One is to manage uh, mercury waste in an, in an environmentally sound manner, taking into account the guidelines developed under the Basel Convention. So this is a very good example of linkage between Minamata Convention and Basel Convention. Uh, secondly, the, uh, parties have obligation uh, to uh, limit their recovery, recycle, recycling and reclaiming of, of mercury for the use only allowed to that party. And thirdly, if for parties to the Basel Convention, uh, the uh, mercury waste uh, shall not be transported across the international boundaries except for the purpose of environmentally sound disposal. There are other provisions uh, relating to, to the mercury, mercury waste. Uh, for example, Article 3 it provides for the dis disposal of mercury from primary gold mining and also mercury from the decommissioning of chloroalkali facilities, and they refer to the uh, to Article 11. Okay, so um, I, I I like to speak a little bit about the. Uh, the thresholds and definition of uh, mercury waste. Uh, for, firstly, uh, uh, the uh, conference of the parties at this third meeting in 19, no, no, 2019, um, uh, uh, COP agreed that uh, we don't need threshold for or type A waste, uh, waste con consisting of mercury, and it is basically the, the mercury and mercury compounds that have become waste are uh, uh, recognized as type A waste. Secondly, for type B waste, uh, waste containing mercury, it means the mercury added products that uh, are at, at the end of life stage. So perhaps, uh, for, for, for example, thermometers and lamps and, and, and uh, cosme uh, uh, some dental amalgam that became waste are uh, uh, waste, uh, type B waste, waste con consist containing mercury. E, and, and, and also at COP3, e, 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 uh, it was agreed that, that for, for the time being, uh, the, the, we, we, we don't need to, to care about overburden and waste rock. And uh, for, for mining waste, we will care only about um, uh, the tailings. Then e, at COP, Oh, uh, uh, in 2022, uh, this year, earlier this, this year in March, uh, uh, the, the COP agreed that uh, we don't need any threshold for uh, the tailings from the artisanal and small scale gold mining uh, in which mercury is used. And, and uh, the, the, these tailings uh, should be uh, managed in an environmental sound manner pursuant to Article 7, which is about ASGM. Uh, the, secondly, the COP4 agreed on the two-tier threshold uh, on mine tailings, the tier one being 25 milligram per, per kilogram total weight, and tier two being the 0 0.15 milligram per, per liter in leachate. And the COP4 uh, requested the expert group to work further on the definition of thresholds uh, for type C waste, uh, waste con contaminated with, with, with mercury. Uh, uh, Basel Convention Technical Guidelines, I, I'm not going into details be because we have a, a dedicated presenter on this, but I would like to mention the uh, Basel COP decision taken in, in June uh, this year, which adopted the technical gui gui guidelines and requested the secret secretariat uh, to, of the, this is a budget secretariat to disseminate the guidelines and, and undertake capacity building projects and, and to prepare a, a short, short document for uh, the, uh, easy to use, use documents. 
and I believe that this session uh, contributes to uh, this uh, request as well. Um, I would like also to, to mention the guidance document on the management of ASGM tailings, uh, which is mentioned in the uh, COP4 decision I, I explained earlier. And, and uh, the COP, COP adopted guidance on ASGM national action plans, and which includes uh, the uh, short guidance on the tailings and uh, management of ASGM tailings. And there, there's a technical document available. Uh, now, the essence is, is, is that if the HGM tailings contain mercury, then treatment is needed and mercury should be recovered and the only uh, the uh, tailings uh, from which mercury has been removed should be, it should go to repro reprocessing. Uh, so following the COP4 decision, uh, the expert group is, is working on the uh, establishing the threshold for type C waste, and and I, I think I I, I only mentioned the the, the fourth bullet. Uh, interest part, interested partners or experts are invited to nominate experts to the to the roster because COP four or requested the expert group to 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 uh, to invite uh, expertise from from a wide range of ro uh, ex experts. Uh, if you're interested, please visit the convention's website uh, on the uh, intersessional uh, work, uh, and you can, you can find the nomination form for all of the experts. Um, I'd like to uh, to close my e remarks uh, with the uh, mention to the capacity building pro project that, that we are going to launch uh, thanks to the general generous contribution of Switzerland. And uh, this Minamata online session is a, a start or, or exploratory uh, 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 opportunity to design this uh, capacity building project. So we, we wish to uh, collect questions and comments on the on our presentations and, and perhaps your uh, uh, questions and comments will uh, very much contribute to the refining of the train uh, uh, the training pro programs and, and materials that uh, uh, we are going to uh, uh, develop. Uh, we are planning or thinking about doing online workshops on, in in six languages in, in uh, sometime next year. So. Um, Please ask questions or provide comments using the Q&A box. And uh, if you need, need more time to think about good, good, good questions, you can uh, send it to me. My uh, uh, email address is, is here. And if you can send, send, send your questions or comments by the end of this, this month, I, I think we can take, take your input into account in the design of the capacity building activities. So uh, with this, I'd like to close my remarks and, and uh, while waiting for questions in the Q&A box, I would like to uh, invite uh, first uh, my colleague in Basel Secretariat, uh, Francesca, uh, to introduce the Basel Technical Guidelines. Francesca, over to you. Um, yes. I hope you can uh, hear me. Um, first of all, I would like to say that I step in for my colleague uh, Melissa Salim, who has been following uh, the development of the technical guidelines and the small intersessional working group lately. And uh, um, I therefore have uh, uh, this uh, hard task to speak uh, uh, for her. I just uh, wanted to share with you that the technical guidelines under the Basel Convention define what ESM is. Uh, it means that uh, the parties agree upon a standard and this standard is the minimum 
uh, it can be better, uh, of course, but uh, it is a minimum standard to avoid uh, the adverse impact of the management of uh, mercury waste, in this case, on uh, human health and the environment. So uh, uh, the, um, the um, Basel Convention develops technical guidelines on uh, all the uh, hazardous and other waste, the most important waste streams uh, in the scope of the, um, of the Basel Convention and also uh, and of course uh, the mercury waste are uh, among them uh, since the beginning of the negotiation of the minamata convention uh, the parties uh, harmonized the terminology between the basel convention and the minamata convention in fact in the minamata convention article 11 you see all these linkages to uh, the uh, terminology and the and the um, uh, activities and and technical guidelines under the basel convention um, the current version of the technical guidelines on mercury waste is an example because uh, uh, in fact it was developed and adopted updated and adopted uh, by the Basel Convention in June 2022 but the updating was requested by the Minamata parties the uh, two conventions also uh, cooperate in their respective technical groups so the um, expert working group on mercury waste thresholds and the small intersectional working group uh, for the development and the updating of the mercury waste technical guidelines the uh, secretariats uh, also cooperate and coordinate the respective activities to arm, continue to harmonize uh, the two treaties and, the, and their implementation. Uh, there is a task force uh, between the two secretariats to uh, coordinate the work in several aspects uh, of, of the work of the two conventions. Um, for the Basel Convention, uh, uh, the ESM of Mercury waste remains a, a priority and uh, it is uh, very important to promote it and to uh, join forces uh, as much as possible uh, to help parties uh, to um, implement uh, the Basel technical guidelines and uh, uh, to make sure that the mercury waste is managed in an environmentally sound manner. And uh, the Secretary uh, of the Basel Convention works in cooperation with Basel regional centers um, for training and capacity building activities and of course uh, also in cooperation with the Minamata uh, Secretariat. Um, to finish my introduction, I would like to thank uh, the government of Japan because the uh, development of the guidance was uh, greatly supported uh, by Japan uh, with the expertise and uh, also um, uh, funding to, to, to allow the meetings and, and to come to the adoption of the updated technical guidelines at the last uh, COP, as uh, shown by um, Exactly. So I uh, now conclude uh, my introduction and I pass uh, the floor to Esaco back uh, to you. Thank you, Francesca. And then I, I'm asking my colleague Moses to play the video presentation of Ms. Kaoru Oka, who really took the pen to uh, update the, uh, the guide, guidance, the technical guidelines. Moses, I don't hear the sound, so perhaps you didn't check the box of the uh, using the computer audio.
file to clarify major points for the Great. Hello everyone, I'm Kaoru Oka from EX Research Institute, and I have been working on the Basel Technical Guidelines for the Environmentally Sound Management of Mercury Waste as a consultant to the Ministry of the Environment Japan, which was the leader country for the update of the technical to clarify guidelines. major points for as indicated in the announcement of this session. Hello everyone, that I'm called Oka from EX Research Institute. Institute. And I have been working on the Basel technical guidelines for the environmentally sound the management purpose of my this as a consultant to the Ministry of the Environment major Japan, points for the which management was the Lead the country for the update of the and clarify major points for the as indicated in the, the announcement of this Points for as indicated in the announcement the teaching and other ways defined. Sorry, yeah, um, I, th I think there was a bit of trouble. Uh, so, uh, there, there's, I, I'm not sure what, what, what happened. Uh, I, th I think it may be better that, that I share the so, sorry about this. the Basel Convention, as well as mercury waste defined under the Minamata Convention. The TG are composed of three chapters. The first is introduction. The second is about relevant provisions of the Basel Convention and international linkages. And the third is about guidance on environmentally sound management of mercury wastes. So, according to the third chapter, major steps to manage mercury waste are summarized as shown here. In this presentation, I will touch upon these elements. In this slide, major points for the establishment of a legal system to manage mercury wastes are listed such as defining mercury waste to be controlled by the national laws and regulations, providing technical specifications on handling storage, transportation, treatment, and final disposal, and providing requirements on waste management service providers and facilities. You may be aware of three categories of mercury waste. One is waste consisting of mercury or mercury compounds, such as mercury captured from crude oil and natural gas processing. Another is waste containing mercury or mercury compounds, which are wastes of mercury added products. The other is waste contaminated with mercury or mercury compounds, such as flue gas cleaning residues. Table 5 in the TG is a long list of mercury waste sources and examples. Once you go through Table 5, you will have a good picture of what mercury wastes are. Waste prevention and minimization is the most important step in waste management. 
The TG provides prevention and minimization method for chloroalkali production, uh, vinyl chloride monomer production, mercury added products, coal combustion, smelting and roasting processes, crude oil and natural gas processing. If you are interested, please see section 3E for more information. The TG provides guidance according to the flow of waste management, such as handling, storage, treatment, and final disposal. In this presentation, I try to pick up major points common to three categories of mercury wastes, and the major points specific to each category of mercury wastes. The following four slides summarize common points for the management of three categories of mercury wastes. For planning the proper handling of mercury waste, it is necessary to collect and analyze relevant information on the hazardous characteristics and risks of mercury waste. Paying special attention to the prevention of evaporation and spillage of mercury and raising awareness of those who are involved in mercury waste management are important. For storing mercury waste, the bottom line is to minimize the potential for mercury releases. The TG provides guidance on storage facilities such as siting and design specifications, as well as guidance on the operation of storage facilities such as developing an inventory and conducting inspections and safety procedures. For transporting mercury waste, the bottom line is to carry mercury waste to final destination without accidental spills. Packaging and labeling properly, tracking waste and employing certified tra transporting companies and personnel are necessary elements to achieve this. Preparing contingency plans prior to transportation is also important. Mercury waste should be treated so that they meet the acceptance criteria of disposal facilities such as specially engineered landfills and permanent storage. It is also important to minimize mercury emissions and releases from treatment processes of mercury waste. The following four slides summarize major points for the management of waste consisting of mercury or mercury compounds. Mercury in bulk form must be carefully packaged in appropriate containers before shipping to designated storage or disposal facilities. Containers should meet specific requirements, leave some headspace, have labels indicating content risks and so on, and be stored upright on the pallets of the ground. And mercury in containers should be as pure as possible. Guidance on storage facilities for waste consisting of mercury or mercury compounds includes the following. Floors should be coated with an epoxy coating. The collection of spills should be facilitated with sloped floors and open floor gutters. The liquid containment volume should have enough margin from the maximum liquid volume. Walls should be materials that do not readily absorb mercury vapor. Areas used to store mercury or mercury compounds should have a their own ventilation systems. Negative pressure environments are recommended. 
For transporting waste consisting of mercury or mercury compounds, additional guidance is that transporters accompany information on purity level and any contaminants. And transport vehicles should be visually inspected for leaks, spills, droplets of elemental mercury upon arrival. The shipment is only accepted when it is compliant with all the requirements. Waste consisting of mercury or mercury compound should be stabilized and solidified before final disposal. Stabilization is conducted as producing mercury sulfide. Since mercury sulfide is a fine powdery material, mercury sulfide should be solidified. Stabilized and solidified waste consisting of mercury or mercury compound that meet acceptance criteria could be disposed of in specially engineered landfills and permanent storage. When disposing such waste, we need to ensure that mercury sulfide has no contact with water or other types of waste and need to be excluded the influence of microorganisms on mercury sulfide. The following three slides summarize major points for the management of waste containing mercury or mercury compounds, which are waste of mercury added products. Waste of mercury added products should not be mixed with other waste for appropriate and effective treatment. It is important to safely handle waste of mercury added products to prevent any breakage or damage. When broken, cleanup procedures should be followed. It is also important to ensure that liquid products such as paints and pesticides are not discharged into sinks, toilets, storm sewers, and other runoff collection systems. Separation of waste of mercury added products from other waste could be facilitated through labeling. Labels may include the presence of mercury or mercury compounds and instructions on proper use, recycling, and disposal. The TG provides several options for collecting waste of mercury added products from households, as shown in the slide. If you would like to know more about these options, please refer to Section 3F. 3b additional guidance on storage of waste of mercury added products include appropriately packaging fragile products and keeping liquid products in their original containers mercury should be removed or recovered from waste of mercury added products Removed or recovered mercury should be treated as waste consisting of mercury, and the remaining waste should be treated as waste contaminated with mercury. If part of the remaining waste is not contaminated with mercury, they could be used as recyclable materials. The mercury recovery process includes pretreatment, thermal treatment, and purification. It is important to minimize mercury emissions and releases from the mercury recovery process through employing closed system for facilities, operating the process under reduced pressure, and capturing mercury in exhaust gas and wastewater. The following three slides summarize major points for the management of waste contaminated with mercury or mercury compounds. Waste contaminated with mercury or mercury compounds should not be mixed with other waste for appropriate and effective treatment. Additional guidance on storage of liquid waste include that containers should be placed in containment trays or curved leak-proof areas and that 
the liquid containment volume should be at least 125% of the maximum limit liquid waste volume. Additional guidance on solid waste include that if the wastes are contaminated with volatile mercury or mercury compounds, they should be stored in sealed containers. For removing or recovering mercury from waste contaminated with mercury or mercury compounds, the same guidance for waste of mercury added products is applied. For liquid waste, mercury could be captured through chemical oxidation, chemical pre precipitation, or adsorption. As pretreatment of sludge for mercury removal or recovery, dewatering is necessary. The TG provides information on other treatment options such as sulfur microcements, soil washing, and acid extraction. Waste that meet the acceptance criteria for specially engineered landfills may be disposed of in specially engineered landfills. If you are interested in examples of landfill acceptance criteria for waste contaminated with mercury, please see boxes 11 through 14 in the TG. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention. And uh, with this, I I would like to move to the uh, next set of presentations, the last last set of presentations, which is from the uh, Global Market. First, invite Imelda uh, to introduce the uh, Global Market Partnership, followed by Nicola, uh, who will uh, uh, represent the uh, waste management area. So, um, Imelda, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isaku, and good, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Uh, my name is Imelda Dosuetui uh, from the Chemicals and Health Grant of UNEP. Uh, I support the coordination of the Global Mercury Partnership, and I'm also involved in the implementation of national action plans and Minamata initial assessment. So before going to the few slides I have, I just wanted to Sincerely thank again the Minamata Convention Secretariat for organizing this very interesting um, Minamata online session. Uh, today, I will just go through quickly and provide an overview of the um, Global Mercury Partnership. And then, as Isaku said, uh, my colleague Nicola will uh, take you through the more specific activities of the waste management area. So, next slide, please. I don't think he is. Okay, thank you very much, Isaku. Um, so the Global Mercury Partnership was actually initiated in 2005 um, by a decision of the UNEP uh, Governing Council with the overall objective of uh, protecting human health and the environment from the emissions and releases of mercury. Um, its priorities include the timely support and effective implementation of the Minamata Convention, uh, the provision of knowledge and science on mercury, but also some outreach and awareness raising towards uh, global action. The um, Global Mercury Partnership is governed by its uh, overarching framework, uh, which was actually recently updated to reflect the adoption and entry into force of the Minamata Convention, as well as practices under the partnership. So to date, the um, partnership is co-chaired by Mrs. Uh, Terapon wiriwuti Coin from Thailand and Mr. Rogers Ankra from the USA. And the partnership counts over 230 partners uh, from government, intergovernmental organization, NGOs, academia, private sector. And those uh, partners are distributed among the different 
partnership areas which reflect actually the major sources of emissions and releases as well as priorities for actions. So as you can see on the slide here, you have the eight partnership areas, which include, of course, the waste management um, area. So next slide, please. So here I just wanted to give um, an overview of the recent and upcoming events and activities. So among those ones, we can mention the um, Minamata Initial Assessment webinar uh, that was actually dedicated to um, the data analysis of the um, mercury inventories that was collect that were collected uh, under the MIA project, but it also provided the opportunity to discuss the update of the mercury inventory toolkit. Um, this webinar happened in September, just a few days ago. Also in September, the waste management area held its uh, annual meeting back to back um, with the International Solid Waste Association, ITFA Congress, uh, which uh, was organized in Singapore. But here again, uh, my colleague Nicola will provide uh, further details on that meeting. Uh, in June, under the BRS COPS, we also co organized uh, together with the Waste Management Area and the Minamata Convention Secretariat. We co organized the side event on mercury waste. Uh, latest development and tools and practices for their environmentally sound management. Besides those events, um, I would like to mention all the efforts um, that the waste management area is doing first in updating in its uh, catalog of technologies and services on mercury waste management, but also in the creation of the three working groups respectively on resource development, capacity building and awareness raising, and on solution exchange. Um, I believe also uh, Nicola will further detail the specific activities of these uh, working groups. Um, in terms of cross-cutting work that the partnership is undertaking, we uh, have worked on two study reports. Uh, the first one on mercury from the non ferrous metals mining and smelting, and the second one on mercury from the oil and gas sectors. So in these two reports as well, authors uh, have also proposed an initial discussion on the management of the waste resulting from these two sectors. And last but not least, we are also organizing the 13th meeting of the Partnership Advisory Group, which is scheduled on the 9th and 10th November in Paris, back-to-back uh, -back with the OECD Global Forum on Environment, but also there is an opportunity to attend this meeting uh, remotely. So here on the slide, and I believe you will have access to the slides, you can have the link um, to the events page, the Global Mercury Partnership, but also the link to the resources page. On the events page, you can find the um, event page um, of the PAG 13, with the links to register for online attendance. Um, next slide, and I think that, that will be my last slide, yes. So here it's just to remind uh, our communication channels, which include the emailing, the website, but also the newsletter uh, that is published on a quarterly basis and is there to uh, share any information on recent and upcoming events, on uh, key highlights, but also to raise awareness and feature um, uh, resources, as well as present new partners of the Global Mercury Partnership. So please feel free to share any uh, information you would like to circulate uh, among the DMP uh, networks. With that, I think um, I am done. Just uh, the last slide. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to take any questions or you can also contact us, my colleagues, Stephanie Lariel and myself, for further information. Thank you very much. Back to you, Isako. Thank you, Melda. So uh, I, I just uh, invite Nicola to present on the uh, waste management area. 
Yes, thank you very much, Eizaku. I will try to go uh, a little bit quicker in order to save time if, if some of uh, the, the colleagues want to, to ask some, some questions. Um, so can you go next slide? I, I will jump also, I, I will uh, skip this slide because uh, Imelda already explained. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so this is a bit uh, the, the last uh, activities of the Mercury Waste Management Area within the Global Mercury Partnership. Uh, we were, I think, quite active uh, during 2021 and 2022. Uh, as Imelda said also, we, we had the, the last meeting of the Global Mercury Partnership Waste Management Area back to back to the um, uh, in World Congress of ISVA in Singapore on the 20th of September. And we also have the opportunity to uh, uh, to have a session of one hour uh, regarding the um, the mercury policy and, and with a panel discussion. It was very interesting during the, the, the World Congress with uh, something like 50, 50 participants to the, to the session. Um, so yes, I, I will. Uh, yeah, yeah, you will see on the slide what we have done on, on the uh, on 2021, 2022. Can you go next slide, which is yes, uh, even in previous meetings, not very interesting. You can uh, you you will see this because I think the the slide will be shared. Just go to the next slide, which will be much more interesting, explaining. Uh, to the um, to colleagues uh, where we are in the activity plan for the waste management area 2022 2024 so the idea was to um, try to take into consideration the past activities of the of the areas and also take into consideration the um, the result of the survey that has been released uh, uh, beginning of 2021, um, and, and combining the, the, those those findings, uh, it seems um, uh, um, the, the best way to continue work in the in the area uh, was to divide the activities in in three topics. Uh, the first uh, one uh, it concerned the development and refining of current available resources. Uh, the second one is on, on capacity building and the third one is on solution exchange. So in each working group, uh, we have some of the members of the waste management area who are dedicated uh, to, uh, to work in uh, with um, one uh, uh, chair and sometimes one vice chair uh, for, for leading the, the group. Um, so <clears throat> the um, the idea behind that is to um, to uh, develop some uh, some some tools on the um, safe management of uh, mercury waste. Can you go next slide, please, Aizaku? Yes. So the working groups uh, are, I would say, independent, but also interlinked uh, because of the. Uh, uh, the work uh, with, uh, within one working group also feed the work in the other working group. So it's really um, interconnected, I would say. And um, we also have the opportunity to collaborate with, the, uh, with the, um, the Secretariat of the Minamata Convention and of the Basel Convention uh, within uh, each of the group, which is very, um, very good to, uh, uh, to ensure the uh, consistency of the, um, the findings and the outcome of the, of the work that is uh, the good job, which is, which is done in the, within the groups. Uh, with uh, the, um, the the current um, uh, document and guidelines existing in the in the Basel uh, at the Basel Convention level and the Minamata uh, Convention level, so within the the, the first group, uh, I have the chance to to lead this uh, this group on resource development, we have four um, items, four uh, objectives. The first one is to, um, to uh, update the catalog email that I talked about uh, previously, and I will also come back on that uh, specific uh, issue. Uh, the second one uh, uh, regards the development of fact sheet uh, for the environmentally sound management of specific uh, waste, mercury waste streams. The third point is uh, regarding uh, the, the resource person list and to review uh, how this resource person list um, is, uh, is used and uh, 
how to make it much more visible and much more um, uh, user friendly for everybody who would like to uh, to um, uh, to catch some of those experts. Uh, and the third, uh, the fourth one, sorry, um, uh, is to try to um, to provide training materials based specifically on the fact sheet and on the the, the catalog um, that has all be already been uh, published and and updated. Uh, in 2021, I think. So the, the second working group is on capacity building and um, the idea is really to, yeah, to, to spread over um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the expertise and the different uh, tools and, um, and uh, uh, documents that already exist and to share experience. Uh, so we already, or the, the working group two already um, uh, um, pre uh, present uh, different uh, webinars um, in the past, and it, they will continue to uh, to um, to provide uh, and to organize those kind of webinars. Uh, the idea is also to uh, to compile the, the different the, the good practices that uh, can also come from the the working group one or for, from the the outcome of the working group three, and um, to have a workshop on, on specific issues. Uh, potentially, we can have, you know, uh, um, a joint, joint workshop with uh, other, uh, West, uh, other areas, uh, for example, the oil and gas or, uh, or the, the interim storage or whatever. And uh, the third group is potentially on a, on a, uh, with an outcome on a longer um, uh, longer period and the idea is really to um, try to put at the same place people who need information and people who can provide answers uh, to those questions uh, and to make this uh, workable and 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 um, more um, uh, fluent uh, with uh, with time so uh, this is a bit the, the the planning for the for 2022 to 2024, and then I will come back much more in the details of two uh, different um, uh, topics we have in the in working group one. The first one regards. Can you go next slide? Uh, the fact sheet. Uh, so the idea of the fact sheet is to provide, as it is written, practi practical and comprehensive answers for the safe management of a uh, certain kind of uh, mercury waste streams. So why we had this idea, can you go next slide, please? Um, in the survey that has been uh, released by the, the area beginning of 2021, um, it was uh, obvious that we still have a problem, or uh, I would say, um, um, parties or uh, stakeholders in general still have problems in the management of mercury waste uh, in general. So this was the first uh, answer of a respondent to the survey. And um, the, the, those challenges or those obstacles uh, um, are in fact everywhere, whatever is the, the category of mercury waste. And we also had the same feeling uh, and the same answer also with, uh, within, the, uh, within the ISVA Hazardous Waste Working Group with uh, questions from developing countries on, uh, uh, on, the, on this specific issue of uh, the environmentally sound management of mercury waste. So we, next slide, please. We decided to, to work together to join forces between the Global Mercury Partnership Waste Management Area and, and, uh, and the ISVA Hazardous Waste Working Group. And we finalize uh, in the past uh, weeks uh, a roadmap uh, that frame the the, um, uh, the work on the on the fact sheet. We also uh, uh, now have a, a, a template uh, for the fact sheet, uh, defining the different um, uh, steps we we have to work on. And also, um, we decided to to prioritize certain kind of waste streams on which uh, we would like to develop. Those uh, those fact sheets. So can you go next slide? And I will just jump uh, even to next one uh, where we have yes. So um, now we have the fact sheet template, uh, and we 
um, taking into, into account uh, the concern of the different stakeholders, uh, it sounds um, good to start working on uh, one type of mercury added product, the non-electronic uh, measuring devices. Um, and this is where we are at the moment. We are just developing the content of the fact sheet on this specific um, uh, big uh, waste stream. Uh, and uh, the next slide, please. Uh, the the idea is to work on all step in the in the in the management chain uh, on the separation of so at source collection labeling storage interim storage transport treatment final treatment so all steps uh, seems to be very relevant and important for uh, for everybody so we will work on all those um, steps within the fact sheet and the idea also to have this um, uh, understandable at the same time by experts but also by non-experts and um, to uh, to make it reliable with the technical guideline of the Basel Convention and the and the um, uh, the document uh, at the Minamata, Minamata Convention level and it will be provided in several languages and at least in English, French and, and Spanish. Uh, and I will go very fastly on the last uh, Yes, this one uh, will be my last slide uh, on the catalog, uh, which is a very important document um, released by the, the waste management area. In this catalog, you will find all the technologies and the services that are available within, uh, worldwide uh, regarding the mercury waste management. This uh, catalog uh, um, uh, will be updated from time to time, and now we are working on a on a more user-friendly uh, format of the catalog. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. And, and uh, this, this was uh, this is a very lively presentation, and we only have, have three minutes left. Uh, I, uh, if if you if if you may allow us. Uh, uh, I, I like to extend a little bit, uh, for, for example, five, five minutes uh, to uh, to respond to to some 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 of the questions, and uh, I would like to pick up some some questions from the Q and A box, uh, as well as the uh, uh, some some of the, the uh, uh, some of you. Uh, it seems that uh, had difficulty in finding the Q and A box, so there there are two questions in 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 the chat box. I think I will pick up uh, Aris Bergman's uh, question about mercury. More than 99.99% is not uh, considered to be waste and, and is therefore not regulated by the, by the Basel Convention. And, um, uh, and, and then I think I, I will ask Nicola to respond to Olubumi Ajayi in the chat box about the list of facilities and, and those capacity building. And I would invite uh, 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 Imelda to respond to Shailand about how to uh, join the Global Mercury Partnership Working Group. So, uh, for, firstly, uh, uh, on Iris's que question, I, I I think I will need to to, to look at the Basel Convention. But but for, from the Minamata Convention, Convention's one point of view, pure mercury, which is waste, is clearly mercury waste. That type A mercury waste, and uh, and and therefore it is under the requirement of environmental sound, sound management, and and also the the, the transport uh, not transported across the, the borders. But perhaps I will. Um, Francesca, do, do do you have any? Yeah, Francesca, please. Yes, I have the same answer as uh, Isaku uh, under the Basel Convention. Um, um, waste uh, are defined as objects which are required to be uh, phased, off, uh, phased off or objects which are um, uh, basically um, uh, substances or objects which are disposed of or are intended to be disposed of or are required to be disposed of by the provision 
of national law or by another international organization. So substances or objects. And then uh, this list is clarified by Annex 1, where we, we will find uh, um, the uh, mentioning of mercury, uh, why for 29, mercury or mercury compounds, waste having as constituents mercury or mercury compounds, why 29? So there is no limit. There is no 99.9%. Uh, Those uh, uh, objects of substances which need to be um, phased off by national law or by another international um, uh, convention become waste uh, under Basel and mercury waste are fully under the Basel Convention as uh, under the Minamata Convention. Thank you. Francesca. So uh, then, can, can can I turn to Nicola? I, I I think you already responded in the chat box, but you can uh, anything. Uh, yes, yes. I I, I was uh, trying to enter the chat box. Uh, yes, for sure. The idea of the upgrading, I would say, of the uh, uh, of the catalog is uh, to have this kind of interactive map where we can find. The location of the facilities, but also the information about the technologies uh, provided by each uh, uh, installation uh, or facilities. And regarding training, yes, you're right. The idea is really also uh, linked to working group two um, to provide uh, these uh, training tools uh, for everybody, and specifically uh, in country where uh, they are uh, the, the capacity. Um, is, is low. So yes, you're you're right, and this is the expectation for from the uh, from the, the the group. Thank you, thank you, Nicola. Then, Imerda, do do you want to respond to Shailand? Yes, exactly. Thank you very much. I was actually typing in the chat, but to uh, join. Um, uh, working group, uh, please just contact the colleagues of the waste management area. I will find the, uh, the email address of Taiko and put it in the chat. And also, um, she will uh, direct, direct you to the chairs of each uh, working group. So let me just find the address and put it quickly in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Mirda. And and I think if you if you go to the Global Market Partnerships web, website, I, I I think there there will be an application form or some something some something. And and there, there, there's no requirement for national focal points and and, and so on. Yeah. I, I I I think you can uh, submit the application for for global. Yes, sorry. Yes, there is no no requirement. You can just uh, um, join the the working group. I will share as well the link to the Global Market Partnership website and to the waste management area page. Thank you, Melda. I think we have covered uh, all, all the questions and there, there, there are some some small uh, practical questions about, about how, how 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 to download the, the, the gu guidelines. But basically the, the technical guidelines are just uh, uh, hot from the oven. Uh, and, and it was uh, agreed uh, adopted in, in in June, and it is currently I understand that it is only available as as, as COP, uh, Basel COP, COP document. Uh, uh, so I, I if I, I think I will email some of you uh, the direct link and, and so on, but but I don't think I will uh, do this now. So thank you very much, and I would like to jump to the the closing and. Uh, my closing remark is just as I sh shared in my last slide. Uh, please ask questions. Uh, uh, please send 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 questions uh, to 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 me or comments to uh, in design and improve uh, capacity building activities. And and we are we are definitely going going to work with the. Uh, the Basel Convention and, and also the Global Market Partnership. So with this, I would like to close this uh, Minamata online session. Thank you very much for uh, participation, for your participation and have a nice rest of the day. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.